action. I'm giving you the tools, right? I'm giving you the sandbox. I'm, I'm, I'm setting the table for you, but it's up to you to decide what you want to eat. Master Chief is human. He's not a machine. He's not a set of armor with a big weapon. He's a human with resilience and courage. You know, and I, I was so looking forward to this moment because for Master Chief, you know, the stoic, the soldier, the man of few words, all that. But there was this progression, you know, in terms of his emotional side, even through the first three games. But this was going to be the great leap. What happens when that soldier starts to discover his humanity? We had to create a situation that was going to knock him out of his comfort zone. The Master Chief has has settled into this comfort zone of being the hero. You know, it's it's interesting. Early on, we talked about the hero's journey, and like, how do you have a hero's journey when he's already a hero? What are the sacrifices that you need to make in order to preserve something as precious as humanity? The journey is the important part. The growth is the important part. And so, really, where does he still need to go as as a human? That became the key to not just the story of Halo Four, but the entire trilogy. We're really examining what sort of burdens a guardian carries. In a lot of ways, the story that we're telling with Halo 4 is about putting Chief in circumstances where he's forced to change, he's forced to take stock of himself. In a way, Chief is a guardian. Cortana is Chief's guardian. The Forerunners were the guardians of their own universe, and they might have to make a decision that not everyone is going to agree with and that some people might condemn. It's almost like you're a little kid and you're just playing make-believe again. So you imagine everything. The table's here. The plinth for Cortana is here. There's a window here. Ready, go. How can we immerse the player even more in this world that we've built around them? I'm not doing this for mankind. How can we have Chief have to deal with his own humanity? Everything had to be predicated by what the character needs were and what direction the characters needed to go in. The art direction specifically for Halo 4 isn't about creating an emotional tone for Halo 4. It's about creating an emotional tone for every single moment and experience that the player needs to understand. Similar to what we said is that, you know, we build what we need to see. We can't look too far this way, it starts to fall apart. But, but back in here, things are looking good. Film is like, I'm going to create something, and it's going to be awesome, and I'm going to polish it, and I'm going to own it, but I'm going to share it with you. Which is very different than game storytelling, which is, I'm going to give you all the tools, I'm going to give you all the possibilities, and it's up to you to discover it answering questions and answering the directions that the narrative had already taken to find the path forward for us as we started to tell the story. We're always telling these huge, big stories. We've got Infinity, it's the biggest ship that has ever been launched. We've got Requiem, which is like the biggest Forerunner artifact we've ever found. But in the middle of all of that, we've got this very small personal story between Master Chief and Cortana. You tell a story with every detail that you put into a game. Immersion is really what allows somebody to believe your universe and also to become emotionally caught up in your universe. Ready to get back to work? I thought you'd never ask. How do we make sure the sights and the sounds and the things that they're feeling as a player inhabiting that suit really comes through more clearly? And you know, technology has allowed us to do that with much higher fidelity than back in the CE days. Okay, so those are definitely bigger ones. Yeah, those start to get... Just because we've got more people. Let's roll video. Yeah. So this will be just video and audio only, no um, face, no mocap. In that case, you won't mind if we return the favor. As we design these things, we put together the best plan until it actually touches an actor. It lacks humanity. Having the ability to work with the actors on stage, capturing their face, body, and voice at the same time, really gives us an opportunity to create a immersive experience for the actors. Working at Giant, we could have at least eight actors in the same volume at the same time. And so the objects that they're acting around and the people that they're acting with, against, through, and toward are there in the scene with them, and it makes a huge difference. We sent out a breakdown for the characters and how we wanted them to feel. We ended up getting what, 80 or 90 submissions back through our casting team. Casting for the Master Chief is tough. You need a performer that has a really raw physicality to him, and yet he has to, within the confines of this suit, be able to relate and relay emotion. I like to express myself. I, I freely do it. I wholly do it. I, I enjoy it. And so pulling back on all of those instincts is what's required to play him. 
Imagine that translating to a 3D model with huge armor and making sure the personality of Chief's movement comes through through that armor was really critical. And that really came down to Bruce's acting, his physical stature, and really his physicality as he went through all of the performance. You'll never see his face or, or hear his voice, but all of the other actors that are playing off of him have received so much from him in their performances, and I think that they would all agree with that. This is the low-res asset of Chief. We were afforded a little bit more budget since he's our hero. From the art process, storytelling is just about engaging the player. You don't have to answer any questions. You don't have to take them through a lot of loops of feeling. The player is engaged. I think you've got the start. So Master Chief's a difficult one because he's a dude in a helmet. There's such a, particularly in science fiction, such a, a fantastic history of people being completely realized as people without having their face as a tool. For us, it's making him feel like a real person. We have a nude male sculpt, and then from there we sculpt it on physically a tech suit. And on top of this guy is when we like spend time just doing all the details and trying to add some of that functionality, even little bits here and there like Braille. And this just reads 117. I think it's connected to having even more modern visual flow when it comes to his lines, his design, the way you follow the outline of Master Chief. Trying to put it into an area where it feels realistic, that it feels kind of tankish. What do you think of a tank? You think square, you think like metal, there's some like wear and tear on the edges. So those things we want to grab, put them on the Chief so it communicates that. The fingers are missing here on these. They have armor caps that come on, but he doesn't have armor caps on his trigger finger or thumb finger so that he could have more tactile sense when he's shooting and loading his weaponry. The last thing we just changed was his visor. His visor picks up the elements based on the room that he's in. We want to take every inch of the character to tell a story as much as we can. Above all, he still needs to connect to the player and they still need to understand him as being that character. It's somebody who's been very loved over the last 10 years. The irony here, right, is that we have a character who's not human at all in Cortana. I was put into service eight years ago. She is the most human character that we have in the story. Like she's struggling with her own mortality. AIs deteriorate after seven, Chief. That's something that everybody struggles with. That's, that's the most, you know, human it gets. If we can just get back to Earth and find Halsey, she can fix this. Everyone has to figure out what it means to, to die. She's strong, she's convicted. She herself is going through a really difficult time in understanding the things that are happening to her. We were looking for somebody who really could bring just fire and stuff that's required for some of those sequences. We needed to make sure we found someone that had some innocence to her, but also could be very strong at the same time. If you imagine that you could have 20 emotions at one time, she has the, I will not allow you to leave this planet! She's really the heart of the game and the heart of Master Chief and explains what's going on and why it's a problem. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to do that. Cortana is certainly our biggest human connection, I think, with the entire story. You know, how can we see these subtle details in her facial structure? It's the forerunner symbol for Reclaim. So this is the baseline where we started from Cortana, and then we go through and tweak and modify, having all these different elements moving throughout her that make her feel alive constantly. We wanted to make it to where you could have code flow lines start from every digit from her toes to her hands and then be able to flow all the way up into her head. What you experience is her taking care of you as a player from a gameplay perspective, but I think you also start to get a sense of how she takes care of the human side of Chief. Wake me. When you need me. They spotted us. Bringing Jen and Steve in and having them layer their voices over the character performances in the cinematics, that just brought the whole experience together. You look at just the number of lines that the Chief has had over the course of the franchise, and it's not a lot. How much firepower would you need? And yet people will immediately call you out on the Master Chief's voice being something very distinctive and important to them. The funny thing is that they've had this off-screen chemistry because they didn't actually meet until last year. Not only is this the first time they've ever sat together on a panel, this is the first time they've ever been in the same room or even met. So seeing them meet and seeing them have that chemistry in real life and seeing how they acted together in scenes just felt like we just missed this opportunity for all these years to actually get them together and get something even more memorable and more exciting out of them. In the beginning they were great choices for those characters. You know, Steve has this very stoic personality that comes through in his few oh, words. Down. The same way Jen's voice is confident and it's strong, but it can also be playful. You do know you don't have to wait until the last minute just to impress me, right? In many ways, Halo 4 is the first act. 
We want a player to be able to ask themselves what it is to be a hero. Is the sacrifice worth it? I often think of him as like Atlas, you know, like he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders all the time. Chief and Cortana are the same person, but she has always been the reflection of his humanity. People don't play Halo to watch a soap opera, and yet you don't want to just be kind of pulp. To me, it's a natural progression of this story, and it takes this relationship to the place it should go to. Don't make a girl a promise you can't keep.